Hello everyone. Right now we will be discussing the collective action problem and the application of prisoner's uh, dilemma in understanding this collective action problem. As we have already understood that this collective action problem has been analyzed by taking into account so many theories starting from Hardin's to Olson's. So, now we will be discussing how the same problem that is collective action problem can also be explained in terms of this prisoner's dilemma game. So, before understanding the problem itself, let us understand what exactly is the prisoner's dilemma game. So, uh, if you are uh, talking about this collective action problems, then we have already understood the theory of public goods, because this theory also helped in, in describing the kind of the characteristics that the collective good is possessing and it is because of this characteristics, this public goods are leading to some issues. So, these are these, these ideas uh, which is uh, already uh, been explained by the theory uh, developed by P. A. Samuelson. And the second one that is also can be helpful or you can say it can be a major analytical traditions in understanding the collective action problem is by the game theory itself. And uh, this game theory was propounded by Newman and Morgenstern in 1944. So, although uh, the game theory was originally propounded in 1944 by these two fellow, but prisoner's dilemma is actually a, a very analytical tool which makes us, makes us understand the issues of collective actions. And again, prisoner's dilemma, although it is a part of the game theory, but still it it is uh, it has been developed by Merrill Flood and Melvin Dresser in 1950. So, what exactly is this prisoner's dilemma? So, you can say that this is a standard example of the game theory that shows why two completely rational people might not cooperate. What is the reason behind this? Even if for the third person it is appearing that if they do co cooperate, it is in their best interest to do so. But still the rational individual because they are, they are actually following the rationality concept that is why they will not be interested in cooperating with each other. And Interestingly, why this, this kind of strategies or why this kind of phenomenon or game you can say is known as prisoner's dilemma, because for the very first time Albert Tucker formalized this game scenario with the example of prisoner's sentence and reward. And because of which, because the example is explained in terms of prisoner's sentence and reward that is why it is known as prisoner's dilemma. That why two prisoners they are not interested in cooperating although if they uh, if they uh, are rational in, in choosing their uh, choices. Although for both of them it is beneficial if they can cooperate each other. So, create in this situation a dilemma uh, is created which is known as prisoner's dilemma in this example. So, let us understand what exactly is this uh, prisoner's dilemma by describing the situation itself. So, here he talked about the situations that two members of a criminal gang they are arrested and that is why they got this impre uh, they are put in prison. And each prisoner is in, is, is in confinement, he do not have any connections uh, with the other, uh, other uh, prisoner, so that he is not he is not able to communicate with each other. So, in this conditions that both of them are isolated and there is no chance for communications. So, both of them do not know what the other will do, whether he will be confessing uh, the, the crime or not. So, now what happens? The prosecutors because of the 
sufficient uh, lack of evidence. So, they are thinking to convict, convict both of them on the principal charge and they hope to get this kind of sentences that sentenced to a year in prison on a lesser charge because the prosecutor itself he is not also getting sufficient evidence to convict them. That is why they are following a lesser charge by putting each of them uh, in the prison by less than one year. And simultaneously the prosecutors they are also they also offer each of the prisoners a bargain. So, each prison is given the opportunity in this cases either betray the other by testifying that the other communicate uh, committed the crime. So, this is the first option, this is the first bargain and the second one is to cooperate with the other by remaining silent. So, what would be now the strategies of these prisoners either to betray the first option or to cooperate. So, given this these two offers two alternatives now the offers would be that if both of these prisoners let us say A and B they each betray each other then they will be getting the sentence for two years in prison both of both of them they will be getting two years of sentence in the prison. And if in this condition that the first prisoner A betrays, but B remains silent then A will be setting A will be set free however, B will be serving the full year sentence that is 3 years in the prison and also the vice versa. That means, if B betrays, but A is remaining silent then B will be set free and A will be serving the term prison, uh, the prison term for 3 years. And the, and the fourth case is that if both of them A and B they are remaining silent. So, that is a kind of cooperation you are saying cooperating each other. So, both of them will only serve one year in prison which is less than 3 years. So, given these offers these alternatives now what would be the strategies both of these prisoners will be following. So, this is explained in terms of prisoners dilemma payoff matrix. So, let us go through that uh, this matrix first that the strategies both of these prisoners are following that they can be silent they can be betraying each other. So, let us say that A is remaining silent and B is also remaining silent. So, now the payoff both of them are getting is minus 1 minus 1 that is 1 years in prison. So, both of them will be serving 1 years in prison since getting the uh, sentence uh, imprisoned is a negative. So, that is why it is we are putting negative minus before 1 and 1, 1 year sentence for each. So, now let us talk about the second strategies that A is remaining silent however, B is betraying. So, in this candy, uh, context the payoff that we will be getting is minus 3 and 0. So, that means here we want to say B betrays that is why he is set free he is not he is not going to get any prison term, but A since he is remaining silent he will be punished for 3 years in jail. If you are looking to the, the, uh, the uh, alternatives for A in case A is betraying and B is remaining silent. So, the payoff that we are getting A is betraying means that he will be getting no sentence. So, he will be out of the prison and B is remaining silent that means, he cannot actually defend whether he has done his done the crime or not. Being silent means he has 
So, it symbolizes that he has committed the, uh, the crime that is why he is getting the full term of prison that is 3 years. So, it is minus 3. So, if you are looking to the case A is betraying whereas, B is also betraying. So, that means, no one is confessing, confessing who has committed this crime. So, the prosecutor will be now be confused that what to do. So, that is why because of the lack of evidence. So, both of them will be getting 2 2 years sentence. So, this is what is explained in terms of a prisoner's dilemma case. So, now let us explain it that betraying a partner obviously offers a greater reward than cooperating with each other. How do you find if you are betraying a partner that means, it is betray and betray that is A is betraying and B is also betraying. So, what is what is the uh, the uh, matrix you are finding it is 0 minus 3 or minus 3 0 right and purely rational self interested uh, prisoners they obviously choose to betray the other. So, the only possible outcome for these two purely rational prisoners is to betray each other because they are rational and obviously, they want to maximize their own utility by setting themselves free by getting 0 imprisonment uh, year. And, and in this case, if they are following this mutual cooperation, so, in this case in fact, this is superior to the mutual defections. Mutual cooperation means A is also cooperating by remaining silent and B is also cooperating by remaining silent. So, no one is actually saying the other has committed the crime. So, in this case they are actually creating a scenario of cooperation and as a result the sentence they will be getting is minus 1 minus 1. So, if they are following the cooper mutual cooperation, so this will be the matrix for them and if they are following mutual defections that means, A is also betraying it the uh, B and B is also trying to betray A that means, A is blaming B that he has uh, committed the crime and B has also uh, uh, said this the same thing that A has committed the crime. So, the prosecutor will now be, uh, be confused that who has exactly done the crime and someone must be lying in this case. So, that is why the matrix that we are getting is minus 2 minus 2. So, if you compare this situation then obviously, minus 1 minus 1 is greater than minus 2 minus 2 that means, minus 1 minus 1 must be preferred over the minus 2 minus 2 that means, each of them it is likely that both of them should uh, prefer one, one and one year pref, uh, in, in, in uh, sentence in comparison to two and two years sentence in this case. So, if they mutually cooperate each other their sentence uh, duration can be decreased to one year, one year and one year each and if they are actually mutually defecting right. So, it is a kind of case of not cooperating each other then this sentence uh, duration will be increased to 2 year and 2 year for each of them. But since this is not a rational outcome for each of this self interested individuals or prisoners because if the prisoners follow the rationality principle then they should be trying to set themselves I mean himself free not taking the others into account. So, that is why they cannot uh, this situation of mutual cooperation is not a rational outcome for a self interested uh, prisoner and both of these prisoners are claimed to be self interested. So, in this case it is not at all uh, a rational outcome from a self interested uh, uh, perspective a choice to cooperate at individual level is irrational. So, here both of them they are realizing that 
at the individual level following the principle of rationality if they are going to cooperate then it is not at all a rational choice. So, this is what we are drawing a kind of dilemma that whether the mutual cooperation although it appears to be superior to mutual defection, but why both of these prisoners here are not cooperating. So, in this case as we understood from the game theory strategies, then we are finding that this defection is the dominant strategies and the payoffs are 0, minus 3 and minus 3 0 for both the um, prisoners A and B. And here the game involves the strategic interactions because the players do not have complete, co complete control over their own payoffs. So, what exactly is the dominant strategies because we are saying that 0 minus 3 minus 3 0 is the dominant strategies for both of them. Then what is the meaning of do, uh, dominant strategies or how you define dominant strategies here. So, in this context the dominant strategies can be defined as the strategies which dominate another if the first strategy always yields a payoff at least as good as and sometimes even better than the second option no matter what any other player does. So, when you are saying that it is minus 3 0 and 0 minus 3 they are the dominant strategies then you can find out that these strategies dominate the options for the second irrespective of what the second person is doing. So, in this context the defection is the dominant strategies for both of these players because they are getting the highest payoff for them. So, if you are comparing the strategies of A that is as per this, this uh, dilemma a prisoner's box we are finding minus 3 sorry minus 1 minus 3 and here we are finding that this minus 1 minus 3 is obviously less than 0 minus 2 right. So, in this context defection is a dominant strategy for A. So, whether this 1 year sentence and 3 year sentence is preferable or 0 year sentence no sentence that means and 2 year sentence is preferable obviously 0 year sentence that is no year sentence and 2 year sentence is preferable over the 1 year and 3 year sentence that is why for A defection is a dominant strategy that obviously he will be preferring to defect not to cooperate. And so far the strategies of B is concerned we can take the payoffs. So, what we are finding? We are finding minus 1 minus 3 and 0 minus 2 in this case. Then also by analyzing the same thing in the same manner, then we will be finding that this defection is also a dominant strategy for B also. So, in this case as you understand that defection is the dominant strategy. So, both of them will be following. So, what is the conclusion we are drawing from this common prisoner's dilemma and how it can be related to or how it can help in explaining the uh, collective action problem. So, if you understand what is the collective action problem and what kind of conclusion we are drawing from the prisoner's dilemma, then we can conclude that the problem of collective action is, the, is just the same that we are finding the problem of the prisoner's dilemma, they are essentially same. But the question is that how these two problems are same how we can say that the problem of collective actions is just equivalent to or it is similar to the problem of prisoner's dilemma that we have described in this scenario. So, let us talk about this collective actions and we have already understood from the theory of uh, Olson's theory of logic of uh, collective actions there we talked about the concept of latent groups. So, if you are analyzing the latent groups then here individual effort to achieve the individual interest will prevent their achievement because if the collective good is not provided then individual member fails to receive a benefit that would have exceeded the individual cost in helping purchase that good for the whole group. So, 
in this context what we have actually understood that individual effort to achieve this uh, the particular individual interest will actually prevent their achievement their group achievement because in case of this in this uh, individual effort they are following the principle of rationality and they may achieve the individual interest right but because they are rational that's why they will not prefer to achieve the group objectives because the once the group objectives are achieved the benefit of this group objectives will be shared by all the members so there is no point that individual member will now effort for achieving the group objectives taking the cost and benefits into consideration so this the individual members they follow the principles of rationality and similarly if you are saying the uh, taking into account the game theory and its analysis so what we are finding a game theory analysis of collective action to demonstrate the the very logic is just the same as the prisoner's dilemma so in this case if you are looking to then in case of prisoner's dilemma if both these prisoners they are going to cooperate then obviously their benefits their group benefits will be more in comparison to their individual benefits but they are not going to cooperate because they are following the principle that we need to be more rational so if you are following this rational principle then it is better to follow that we need to go sentence free instead of going to cooperate and finding one year sentence for each of them so that's why their preference is not to cooperate rather than to defect although cooperation begets the highest priority so similarly in case of this provision of collective goods in the latent groups if the individuals they would follow the the same same uh, irrationality that we need to achieve the group objectives then the the provision of the group objectives the provision of the collective goods for the group objectives can easily be met but deliberately the individuals they do not want to achieve this objectives thinking of that what would happen to their own self interested interest if they are not going to be rational for themselves so by doing so you are actually finding the similar situations that they could have actually cooperate by following their own individual interest for fulfilling the group interest but they don't they do not care so in this context of game theory and collective actions as we are dealing with game theory here we need to understand some of the major concepts that we are using here so first of all what is what is game theory so this is a study of interactions or you can say strategic decision making or strategy set of strategies and which one is to be picked among the rational individual here so the assumption is that the players are the are following the rational principles and what exactly is the game so obviously it is a kind of strategies or the strategic intervention for decision making and the idea is that or the very uh, underlying <coughs> assumption is that each of this player whatever the decision they ma they make it can affect the other player so that is what they are playing or they are doing a kind of strategic in intervention in the decision making in both of their decisions in fact and what exactly is the payoff this payoff for the are in terms of loss or reward in this example that we have taken into account it may be a reward in terms of lessening the sentence or a loss in terms of increasing the sentence in the prison and what is the, the dominant strategy strategy so it is a choice that always lead to a higher payoff regardless of what the other player is choosing so in this case the dominant strategy is <coughs> not to cooperate and not to cooperate 
for both of the prisoners yielding them the highest the preferred choice. And what exactly this prisoner's dilemma? So, it is a situation that shows how cooperation breaks down and no, non cooperation is a dominant strategy. So, in prisoner's dilemma, the situation is arisen where it is unlikely to go for cooperating each other rather than preferring the non cooperations. So, this Although this situation cannot get this Pareto optimal outcome, but still the uh, because the the players they are following the dominant strategies that is why it is leading to the situations of the prisoners dilemma. And what exactly is the collective action dilemma here? So, these are again the situations and context in which the production of some groups the benefit is limited or even prevented by temptation to free diet. So, in a nutshell you can say that collective action problem is nothing, but the situation which is giving rise to free riding case. That means, the individual members they will not contribute to anything rather than to think that why we need to pay anything, we need to actually be accommodated with others expenditure and get the benefit out of it. And another thing in this collective action problem that we have already discussed in uh, discussed in Hardin's theory that is the tragedy of commons again it is a situation. And in this context individuals act independently and very rationally of course, for achieving self interest which may be contrary to the group interest. And that is why it results in depleting some of the common pool resources or common resources. So, that is what is narr already narrated by Garrett Hardin in his uh, tragedy of the common. So, now let us uh, after understanding the game concepts game theory concepts and the collective action concepts let us have a look into the individual versus collective in terms of the game theory. So, now let us have uh, this that we are taking the payoffs of the collective or group as well as well as the, the payoffs of the individual member. How what will be their strategies? Whether they need to pay, they will be uh, going for payment, they will be likely to uh, they will be liking to pay or not to pay. So, for the individual is concerned and so for the collective a group is concerned. So, here we can say that this is the uh, the payoff. So, in this case for the provision of the collective actions here the if individual things to pay and the group also things to pay then your payoff would be 1 1. If the individual is thinking to pay and the group is not paying anything then the payoffs is minus 0.8 and 0 0.8 and likewise. So, before understanding this this uh, payoffs matrix let us understand what is the example where we are drawing this payoffs. So, here the row entries whatever you are finding the payoffs for the individuals and the column entries they are per capita payoffs for collective and here collective is defined as the group minus this particular individual which is plain and payoffs are defined as the minus uh, sorry the benefits that the, the member is getting minus the cost he is incurring for this collective good. So, now let us narrate this situations the scenario is that let us say the group is comprising of 10 members and here the target is the provision of a collective good the uh, collective good of value twice it costs that means, its actual cost. So, uh, actual benefit after the provision of this good will be twice that a particular member is spending. So, it means you can say if the collective good is x is taken as x then it means the market price of this collective good x let us say is 
6 rupees per unit then the members will be paying 6 rupees to enjoy 2 units of that particular good. So, this is what the each of the members they would be paying. So, now in this context, so there are 2 possible results. If one member of the group declines to pay a share, then what will happen? Because sometimes we are also facing this situation and largely in this in this in this group behavior, the members they want to free write. So, if in a case in a group a member declines to pay its own share then what will happen? What is the possible possible scenarios? So, either the total benefits will be proportionately be reduced or the second one could be the cost to each of the members of the group now will be increased proportionately because one is not paying. So, if you are taking the former case here right. And we are assuming that there is no initial cost in providing the collective good and there is also no differential cost as payments and the resultant benefits it will be uh, giving rise to. So, in this context we are actually talking about this exactly 2 units of collective goods that is x which will be provided for each units paid by the individual members in the group. So, if the individual member is paying 6 rupees, then they must be getting 2 units of the collective ax, collective good itself that is x. So, now as you understand that in this group we are having 10 members. So, if all the members pay for 1 unit for this collective good then the total amount that would be paid for the uh, for the 10 units itself and the benefits each member will get is 2 units of x although the cost they are paying is for 1 unit. So, now the amount of collective good is 20 units because they are paying for 10, 10 units and they will be getting double of the value. So, that is why they will be getting 20 units of the collective good. So, the individual payoff in this situation can be defined as benefits minus cost. So, what is benefits minus cost? That means, an individual member is paying for 1 unit of the collective good however, he is getting 2 units of collective goods in return. So, that is why if you are if you want to define individual payoffs then it will be the total benefits minus cost that is 2 units minus 1 unit is 1 unit here. So, now we can understand this this payoff table that is individual versus the collective. So, if you can uh, uh, um, write it out, write it down, then you will be finding that if the individual is paying and then and the collective they will be also paying, then the payoff would be 1 1. Individual will be getting the benefit of one collective good and the group is also going to get the benefit of one collective good. If both of them are paying individual is paying as a member and the collective all the members they are paying that is why collective is paying. So, it is 1 1. So, now let us think because the free riding is an essential characteristics of this collective issue or collective action. So, if a particular individual is not willing to pay then what will happen? So, if the individual will not pay then out of 10 members one member is not going to pay how many how many members are paying it is exactly 9 members who are paying. So, 9 members paying means for how many units of collective goods it is twice 9 into 2 is 18. So, 18 now the benefit is 18 and it is not and, and this 18 needs to be shared by all the members in the group that is 10 members. So, payoff for share 
would be 18 divided by 10 that is 1.8. So, if the individual not, is not paying, he is getting a share of 1.8. What will be the payoff for the collective? It will be 0 0.8 because if all the members are paying, it will be 1. But now, one member is not paying that means, 1 minus 0 0.2 is 0 0.8. So, this is 0 0.8. So, now let us discuss if the collective is not paying, only the individual is paying, what will be happening? So, the collective is paying, sorry individual is paying and the collective is not paying, what will be the payoff? It will be obviously negative, why? only one individual is paying and others are not paying, but the benefit is going to be shared. So, that is why it will be once it will be shared the payoffs are going to be decreased and it will be minus 0 0.8 and minus 2. And if the individual is not paying and the collective is not paying, then obviously there is no question of providing the provision of the collective good itself. So, now let us actually think about this minus 8 and minus 2. So, we are, we are already done with this, we need to think about this the individual is paying, but collective is not paying that means only one individual is paying. So, in this case the total amount of payment is how many? 1 rupees obviously the particular individual is paying and how many collective units can be procured by exchanging this one unit of uh, money then obviously it is 2. One unit paying 1, oh, one rupees money you can procure 2 units of this collective good. So, now this benefit is to be going to be shared. So, the per capita share would be how many? The benefit is here 2, 2 units of collective goods and it may, must be shared by all the members, 10 members, although the rest of the 9 members they are not paying. So, what is the per capita share now? 2 divided by 10 is 0 0.2. So, the individual payoff here as you understand that it is defined by taking into account benefits minus cost. So, here per capita share of benefit out of this collective good is 0 0.2. What is the cost the individual is bearing? He is paying 1 rupees. So, how the individual what is the individual pay of here? 0 0.2 minus 1 is minus 0 0.8. So, this is the case where the individual is paying, but rest of this 9 members in the group they are not paying. So, now what would be the payoff for the group? That is the benefit right. So, here again benefits minus cost. So, the total benefits is 0 0.2 and what is the cost total cost the group is paying? It is 0. So, it is 0 0.2. So, in this case the dominant strategies for both these as an individual member and the collective is not to pay because if they are not paying then they are actually getting more share out of it and not pay not pay is the only equilibrium in this case. And you can say that how this equilibrium is defined. So, you can say this outcome is to be in equilibrium condition if no player has an incentive unilaterally to switch over the strategies. That means, no player is thinking that I should go for paying. If this is the strategies then this equilibrium condition would not have occurred. But however, when you are saying that they can actually mutually cooperate 
and in that case their share would be more would have been more that's why the existing scenario for the equilibrium is not pareto equilibrium and this is the similar to your collective action problem and the same collective action problem is explained through the this payoff matrix where we are saying it is the dominant strategies that is not to pay and not to pay that means we are not cooperating although if you are going to cooperate you will be getting more benefits right or it is generally the choice that one should cooperate but following the individual rationality they are not cooperating so this is the same conclusion we are drawing in the collective action case also so you need to actually explore this the original contribution this is the reference for this chapter collective action action chapter 2 and you can follow this book chapter 2 uh, collective action by hardin drasel so this is this actually uh, defines that how this collective action problem be explained in terms of this prisoner's dilemma and how uh, the uh, collective action issues and problems can be explained by taking different strategies like game theory is taking so in the next class we will be explaining another theory in explaining this collective action problem that is ostroms elinor elinor ostroms uh, theory that explain the a kind of solutions to the collective action problem and perhaps this is the latest theory that we will be dealing with in explaining the case of collective actions thank you very much Thank you.